Welcome back everyone, it's Vaz again with another video from World of Warships Legends. And today we're in the Alabama, the American Tier 7 Premium Battleship. This is the one that you can get for 350,000 Global XP. In today's game we are on the Sea of Fortune map in a game of domination. Now let's go over our shipping forecast here. On our team we have a Le Fantast, a York, a Flint, a Mogami, Nagato, Sharnhorst, Nelson, Bismarck. And on the enemy team, there's a Yadachi, York, Belfast, Japayev, two Gneisenels, a Colorado, a Vladivostok, and an Iowa. So obviously this is a tier 6 and 7 game. Now we have spawned above Sea Cap, and so we'll be playing that side. We're going to have more on that in just a moment. Now I have no idea where my friendly cruiser is going. It looks like he's trying to actually abandon our flank. That's always fun to see. But we never abandon our flank, do we? So we just continue on ahead. Now there are a couple of reasons I'm bringing this game to you. And flank abandoning is one of them. But not only does it happen on our team, but it happens egregiously on the enemy team and it probably leads to them losing this game. And I thought it would be interesting to point it out as we go along in this match. And we'll have more on that in a moment too. First I'm just going to give this cruiser the evil eye. He can't see that we're looking at him but he can feel it. He's feeling a cold shudder go up his spine right about now. Yeah, and so back to the reason I was bringing you this game. There were uh, two big reasons. Well, the first is that I have a decent game. Okay, so that's three reasons. Second reason is coming up very quickly, so we'll get into that uh, when it comes up. And that third reason is the flank abandonment, and we'll talk about that later when we get to it as well. We saw a couple enemy ships off in the distance there, so we just slowed it up. And we see a broadside Gneisen now. We didn't use our accuracy plane, but check out this shot from over 17 kilometers away. Target penetrated. A double citadel right through the weak deck armor for over 38k. He's probably thinking, WTF, I just spawned. What just happened? So now he's put it into full gear, so now he's kind of ducking behind that island a little bit. But we do get a second shot away at him. Not as good, but still nice. Over 10,000 in damage. And then one of our teammates finishes him off, and that's the end of his game. Two and a half minutes in. Thanks for coming out, guys. now. That'll teach you to sit in the back. And so that was the second interesting point I wanted to bring up. And that's the weaknesses of the uh, German battleships. They're next to impossible to citadel up close because of their turtleback armor. But if you can get plunging fire downwards through the deck, that's how you can access their citadel and you can really do some damage to them. But that's not going to be the end of the demonstration on plunging fire though. Oh no, we'll have another class on that later on in the match as well. We did try to sneak a shot at that Vladivostok who had spawned with the Gneisenau, but he had slammed the brakes and avoided it. At the same time, our friendly Bismarck said that he needed our support, and I assumed we meant he was pushing forward, and so we're going to push forward with him. It is kind of funny that Bismarck ends up hiding behind me the entire game. It's like one of those little multi guys at the bar with a big friend to stand behind. Now as we're pushing forward here, we can see that our destroyer has uh, capped the base. So now we control Charlie objective. But he hasn't spotted anyone. And so that brings us uh, to our third point to uh, talk about in this game, and that's uh, the flank abandonment point. Their entire team has abandoned this side of the map, and they've all congregated over in the west portion of the map. And because of that, they have no one spotting over here. And we haven't exactly been hiding. But it's been almost five minutes into the game and we haven't even been detected yet. Never mind shot at. No, you can't shoot what you can't see. But you also can't defend yourself against what you can't see either. That's the other thing to think about. And we just continued moving forward here. We brought up the map there to try and figure out uh, what in the world the enemy team is doing all bunched up together. Look at them all there. It's almost baffling. It's just like, really? You can just sail straight forward and not run into anything? The Vlad is still there backing up and he's about to give us a beautiful target. So we swing out our back turret and fire everything we've got at him. And we get a nice 20k salvo with a citadel. 
while completely destroying a turret. And he's gotta be wondering, what in the hell is going on here? Now that time against the Vlad, we did launch our spotter plane, and that uh, most assuredly helped us with that salvo. Now I don't know which ship spawned over on this side. Perhaps he was one of the ones that abandoned this side of the map. But no matter what the case is, him and that Gneisen now are the ones that have paid for it so far. And one of our teammates uh, finishes them off there. Our next target looks like it's going to be a Belfast, and so we take a shot at him. Boy, the guns on this uh, Alabama are sure accurate. We got four hits on that Belfast, but he was flat broadside to us, so they're all over pens, unfortunately. Maybe this next shot he'll be at a bit of an angle and we'll get uh, better results. But then our friendly Nelson just absolutely deletes his ass. Oh my goodness. It is an absolute bloodbath over in that area of the map. So unfortunately we don't get a whole lot of kills in this game. We usually end up doing a whole bunch of damage to a ship uh, only for one of our teammates to end up finishing him off. And that's fine, we're probably just going for our, one of our premium tier 7 wins in this game. But yeah, we just continue to push forward here. And again, the, all the enemy ships seem to be congregating together for some reason. Some sort of party memo that went out that said everyone get together. So we just keep on pushing up behind them here on their uh, weak flank. We're about to arrive at the enemy side of the map all the way in Bravo Cap. And we have to come within 10 kilometers of an enemy ship. And still no one has taken a shot on us and we're at full health. All nine ships on the red team sailed from the middle and eastern spawns over to the west and you just can't do that. It allowed our flank from our team to just tee off on them. And we've been able to take our Alabama and get a crossfire going on the enemy team without even putting much effort into our positioning. And that's why you always need to play your flank, boys and girls. Spawn in your flank, die in your flank. And if that means you die before the end of the game, so be it. That's what it takes to win games. So okay, here we go. Back to our lesson on shooting at German battleships from distance. We have yet another Gneisen now moving slowly in the back portion of the map. We fired away with our front turrets and got another citadel, and then swing our back turrets around to continue the punishment. And altogether, that was about a 20k salvo. I don't know what he's thinking by standing still like that. But we're going to teach him that it's not a good idea, and we finish him off with yet another citadel, netting us our first kill of the game, and putting us at over 122,000 in damage so far. And that concludes our lesson on citadelian German battleships. It definitely helps that the Alabama has a higher firing arc than some other battleships that allows it to really lob those shells up high so they plunge down into the deck of the enemy ships. Our team has lost a few ships so this game looks a lot closer than it actually is. Our next target looks to be the Colorado. He's at full health still so he's been uh, doing some ace hiding up until now. That uh, dispersion was actually pretty ugly on that first shot but we still got two pens for 9k damage and that gets us the high caliber medal. As we continue along here, we're about to uh, enter the Alpha objective, which uh, is the only objective the enemy controls. And now we can see all four ships remaining on the enemy team. They've gathered around the Alpha Cat. We had a quick check over at the Iowa at our port side to see that uh, he was actually heading east, so we wouldn't have to worry about him. I could just focus on the other three ships. We were able to get uh, all three turrets on that York, so we fired away at him, but he was uh, zigging and zagging, and we only got 4k damage on him. But uh, Kali is now uh, hightailing it uh, behind that island and the Chappie is about to follow him. So while we waited for our turrets to reload there, we uh, refocused on that York. And we're just continuing along at full speed here. And we end up with a very nice shot on that York and that just leaves them with a little sliver of health left. But oh crap, that Iowa has circled back, damn it. And we hit the brakes and turn in. And we saw him just a little bit too late. And he just spanked us hard in our little peepees. Oh my goodness, that hurt. Ouch, that was a good one. This York really looks like he wants us to put him out of his misery, so we're gonna oblige him. I don't know what his plan was gonna be, 
he had nowhere to go, and we finished him off. And that got us our second kill of the game. Now we're at a much better angle towards this Iowa here. And we go in looking for some revenge on that Iowa. But he's kind of at a weird angle there. And we don't get much against him. Only a few thousand damage. But now we're really pushing these guys. And they're all running. This chappy is really pissing me off with his bitchy kiting and his HE spamming, so we turned our attention towards him. Really, we're just counting down the moments until we reach a thousand points. It's really too bad we're gonna win on points. It would have been nice to try and finish off some of these guys. Really pump up our stats for this game. We had taken a shot at that uh, kiting Chapayev, and it looked pretty good actually. Either his turning circle is a lot uh, wider than we thought it would be. Or he's got one of those magic incoming dispersion boosters. And so we only hit him for one overpan. With all his cutting back and forth, and our dispersion uh, playing tricks on us there, we're not uh, having uh, much luck against him. Now we're expecting this Colorado to pop up uh, behind this island. Our friendly destroyer has put his controller down. He's gone for a piss break. He knows that uh, we have this all wrapped up. And there is the Colorado popping out there. We fired away our back turret and got a nice uh, 13,000 damage hit on him. Fire away our second turrets. Will this be a deletion? And no, saved by the buzzer of shame. Oh, that's always humiliating to be left alive at the end of the game. Oh boy, do I ever feel embarrassed whenever that happens to me. Well, that wraps up our game in the Alabama. I do hope that game was a little bit informative for a change. Not just me droning on about the gameplay or ranting about nonsense. We definitely had a nice demonstration on plunging fire into German battleships. And we witnessed a textbook example as to why it's important not to abandon your flank. And stats-wise, we ended that game with 166,000 in damage, two kills, and the high caliber medal. And we finished top of our team on the leaderboard, while on the enemy team, the Iowa and the York, looked like they did all they could to make up for the rest of their team's poor positioning. Well, that about wraps her up. If you did like that video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay healthy and do what makes you happy.